Sup everyone, this is Carrick from ACG. Fresh from my past future way back machine, I bring to you the review for a game in the past brought into the future forcibly by the fine folks at Flying Wild Hogs. Hard Reset originally came out in around 2011. While it relegated itself rather quickly to sort of repetitive gameplay later on, its use of excellent effects and cyberpunk Blade Runner meets Terminator absolutely incomprehensible storylines somehow made a lasting impression on many of us gamers. So like Doom, Shadow Warrior, and what appears to be a bevy of other top ballistic titles from our past, here comes Hard Reset the Redo or Hard Reset Redux. This has all the content from the original plus the later Exile expansions, new enemies, a new weapon, and some new gameplay. It's coming out for the Xbox One, PS4, and PC. So let's jump in and see if Hard Reset deserves a three-fingered salute to cash-ins everywhere, or if like Shadow Warrior and Doom, the future finds a place for the past. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Hard Reset Redux, transforming weaponry, the first lightning in a bottle gun, and sentient statues. And of course, graphics are up first. When the original game came out, one of the things most people really lauded this for is the fact that the game seemed hell-bent on creating a world just so you could blow the goddamn thing up, throwing explosions on top of explosions and all manner of effects. The original was never damn shabby to look at. Now sadly, as we move forward here, we have an odd dichotomy that displays out on screen, but in the end, seriously, if this thing isn't exploding, it's thinking about exploding. Sadly, all of those cool effects really can't help some weird design. At first, many of the locations are one part archaic architecture, the likes of which we haven't seen since around 2011, and one part colored lighting and particle effects extraordinaire. Even from the get-go, the game gives off this odd vibe of Lego mixed with what it would look like if you walked into a neon sign store and just started beating the shit out of everything. Now, later levels start to stretch their legs with an absolutely beautiful destroyed Skywalk moment, more than one callback to the Blade Runner feel of flying cars and Edward James Olmos before he was battle-starred. But it's incredibly hit and miss, and for every awesome vista, there's a confusing right angle only twisting and turning level with death funnels opening into a larger death funnel only to merge with other death funnels. Now, one place the game doesn't skip is the effects, plain and simple. When the game is moving and the enemies are attacking, it is a spectacular series of explosions, colorful weapon bursts, and enemies who seem to have been built with nothing but silly putty holding their parts together. It's a visual feast to look at, again, when it's going full speed. And while the enemy designs a bit everywhere, many have one or two attack forms, which helps the graphics define the gameplay. And the first time the big-shouldered, skipped-every-leg-day gorilla robots keep shambling towards you after you've decimated one of their appendages, it's hard not to be just a little bit impressed. Now, sadly, weapon models aren't really super interesting, with machine guns that transform into grenade launchers that somehow Michael Bay themselves into dual-barreled shotguns. And that really seems like the order of the day here, as well as a particle gun that looks like someone took one of those Eye of the Storm electric globes from Radio Shack and stuck it on the end of a Nerf gun with some duct tape. Now, when the game isn't balls to the wall hectic, it's impressive to just watch some of those weapons transform. Though it's the action, again, and not the result, that sort of matters here. In fact, it's sort of like a transformer that goes from one block of wood into a slightly cooler block of wood. One design I did enjoy is, of course, the new Electro Katana, which is basically a lightsaber, sounds almost like a lightsaber, and performs, well, exactly like a lightsaber. Their impacts, however, are absolutely astonishing at times. There's just so much detail here. Whether it's the pressure wave of a missile hitting and the fire overtaking it and throwing showers of particle effects and debris everywhere, or the mad scientist laboratory effect of the particle gun's myriad secondary firing types, there are so many minuscule details you can miss if you're not paying attention. Like the first time you toss a black hole grenade at some of the soon-to-be-dead robots and they look like they're trying desperately to escape. Really well done. At 1440p with everything maxed, the game ran above 60 FPS the entire time, but there were some frame timing issues that did crop up. Not a ton, and they seemed connected to areas and not battles, but it was noticeable. So as a package, I'd just say this is pretty goddamn good looking as a title, and while the game does its best to really unimpress at the very start, its levels sort of break out in front of you later on, and really no one can deny the lighting engine has some moments of utter brilliance. Sound, music, and voice. Nerd is my middle. You could have shown your soldiering while on patrol, Major. 
hey, you know what? Let's do sound first. Yeah, it's this is just hit and miss, guys. First, the use of environmental audio cues as well as a stupendously pretty flawless 3D audio engine means you can hear a burning robot arm crackle and snap as it flies past your ears. And really, for the first time in a long time, you can actually tell it's behind you without that requisite, hey, let's just make it sound quieter on the left kind of design situation. While weapon and explosive sounds are good, many of them lack definition, and the damn particle gun sounds like a loop the moment you put it on rapid fire, and it's just painful to listen to during protracted battles. Additionally, many of them really have no trailing off sound or build up sound. It's just there and gone again, missing that resonance that other titles recently have sort of understood. That crackling electricity collected into a glass globe that's dangerously close to your groin would have a starting collecting noise, then build into the capacitor overload, and then sound of the particles as they explode, leaving the weapon and fading off the trailing end as the air is literally heated to the surface of the sun. But none of that is done here. Also, yeah, I get that Katana is supposed to be a lightsaber, but man, this is dangerously close to just plagiarism and sound. They had so many other ways they could have gone here, and instead they end up sounding way too close to its obvious inspiration. Now, it does seem like for every good, there's a bad, and that's pretty much this game. For example, one weapon that sounds fine is the machine gun, which is notorious in other titles for sounding sort of crap. Its spool up and down are both detailed and timer perfectly to mimic what you're seeing on screen, and its low end, I guess, would be enough to reflect a chainsaw that is shooting bullets at you. The real issue here, for me at least, is due to most enemies being of the toaster with a brain style and variety. When firing and hitting them and they're flying apart, the sound in battle can really get cluttered right there in that kind of metal hitting metal range resulting in a little bit of an uncomfortable effect. As a complete package, the sounds may not be the best, but that 3D audio engine works pretty damn well. Music, one of my favorites. So you guys know me, music to me is this melding of a game's current visual presentation mixed with either music or the absence of such to sort of congeal the senses and offer one overall feeling, theme, or mood for a location. <laughs> Much of Hard Reset just does none of this. This is just all over the place. It's like they can't decide, are we a mosh pit, smash mouth, rock, or occasional vibey deep thought trance, or maybe synthing techno. In the end, tracks, whether they are completely different through a soundtrack, still need to have some overarching theme that matches them. Now, while it certainly took a shotgun approach to the iTunes category search pattern, it just turned me off instantly. The harder, thrashier tracks just don't fit in, while many of the cutscenes tracks were actually excellent. While at times the ambient music is really an uneven smattering of sounds like a horror film dynamically paced with action, which I actually liked, more often than not, it felt like it was trying to channel WCW Weekday Nights Wrestling, where Meg Death had show up and play Crusher before an event because, well, there was no apparent reason. It's just not my cup of tea, despite it being pretty musically well done. Voice. It's just, it's bad. It's past corny to some kind of we don't really care to emote emoting. At times sing song and other times stilted. It's altogether just directionless. Though the main character apparently just learned curse words and fills each cutscene with a plethora of your mom and dad don't want you to say that kind of sentences. One character met about halfway through the game is noticeably better, however, and certainly better than the others, but sort of devolves into a Warhammer 40,000 style delivery quickly thereafter. As a package, these voices are completely unimpressive. Gameplay. Let's discuss story for a moment. There is one, enough said. Not kidding, but seriously, the game tells a tale of a futuristic city in the middle of a robot versus human game of Death Tag, and the main character Fletcher and his experiences throughout. Basically, you start as him working for and trusting your employer, then some dude you don't trust tells you that trusting the wrong people is bad, which makes you trust the untrustworthy and distrust the one you're originally trusting? Yeah. And that's about all I could glean from it. You shoot, zap, zing, slice, dice, explode, and exfoliate the faces of enemies as you traverse the various locations, and there's some cutscenes that look like comic books, and none of it makes any sense. The real issue here is that Reset offers absolutely nothing new to the game moving forward, and in fact, where Doom was almost a soliloquy to moving forward gameplay, a great deal of Reset's problems revolve around dodging architecture hangups and invisible blocks, unjumpable jumping areas, and all sorts of ancient conventions from games past. I swear, in a fast sprint, it looks like a damn Justin Timberlake pop and stop dance off with you hitching, hanging, bumping, and jerking on the smallest of items on the ground. It is really, really odd. In fact, after this many explosions in a game that really says, hey, you can shoot and destroy almost anything, I really wish they would have turned some of that collision detection off. Now, like I said prior, it just seems like there's some good and some bad. The control itself is excellent with no delay in movement and a fairly good feedback system and recoil system in the weapons. And you also have the ability to upgrade those weapons, the machine gun, particle cannon, or sword with a large number of alternate fires from power-ups you get. 
But if you like those alternate fires, guess what? There's some oddness in the controls. If you want the particle gun version, then you hit F2 and then you hit 4. But if you hit 4 too quick, sometimes you just stand there with the default version of the weapon, which is UAF, or as I like to say, useless as fuck. So when switching between various versions of the three weapons during a tense battle, while frankly just absolutely getting smote by every enemy on the screen, it is completely clumsy, which is sad because the very thing that defines this title detracts from it. And when I said, unfortunately, that was one of the best parts that define this game, I meant it. For example, the harmony and hard resets gameplay really solidifies with the alternative modes of the weapons. The secondary modes of some of these weapons are brilliant, like the EMP shotgun burst, which freezes many enemies in their tracks for a couple seconds. Now, it's not relegated or restricted to any kind of use, and that's when it matters. It's a weapon that raises the gamer above the level for a moment and brilliantly broadens the ability to strategize across this minefield of enemies all yearning to see if they can wear you like a skin suit. Now, the railgun attaches to the particle cannon, and it's absolutely one of the heaviest hitting weapons that I can personally remember in a game. I mean, seriously, most one-shots send enemies into alternate dimensions at brilliant speed. And the katana, when upgraded, makes quick work of enemies. Too stupid to realize that the one thing you don't do to a guy carrying a grenade launcher, a Navy-style minigun, and a glowing fucking sword is rush them. And when it comes down to rushing them, indeed, I would say most of the AI is passable at best, even on the harder levels. In fact, sadly, this is all sandwiched in boring level design, especially at first. And then it sort of broadens out, but in the end, it boils down to fight, 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 turn on a machine, fight, 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 move to the next spot. While the game added the katana and a new leaping burst forward action, which is actually kind of brilliant. It's all packed into so much cumbersome bullcrap that it's almost physically painful to play at times. For example, the moment I was sort of slicking and moving back and forth between two enemies, the cumbersome weapon switching meant extra steps while I tap danced around enemy fire like I was taunting them. And the first and 800th time I sprinted across the level, the herk and jerk of running into items actually almost made me sick. And the fact is, is that the spawn closets for some enemies is incredibly tight. Sometimes they fall on your head during battle. Or that was a bug, I can't tell. Fun factor. Okay. So, yes, I had fun. In fact, I had brilliant moments of fun, but that word moments should speak volumes to everybody listening. Hard Reset Redux tries hard to come into the future, but misses it by a very long shot. And for every single awesome thing they bring, and trust me, there is some awesome here, it's held back by road enemy patterns, boring level design, a fairly middling music score, and a story that obviously wants to be told, but was apparently ran through Google's voice-to-text system prior to release. In the end, this game couldn't be more hit and miss if it was actually called hit and miss. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. At this price, for a little bit more of a sale, I don't think somebody who's looking for a first person shooter would have an issue picking this up. It's not necessarily wait for a deep, deep sale. It's just one of those games that's so hit and miss that you're gonna really have to decide what it is that you care about hitting and what it is you care about missing. So as always, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs out, check out Reddit, check out my patron, maybe follow me on Twitter. If you disliked it, always make sure to give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.